Warning, my research on most of this was pretty thin. Toronto recently had a sudden transit strike that lasted barely a day. People around the world may find this confusing, so let me try to explain with this Guide to Toronto, Canada, and the TTC. Okay, so, Toronto is a world-class city of however many million people that has the least subsidized mass transit system on the continent, the Toronto Transit Commission, or TTC. You'd think that being a world-class city would mean not having so much of the worst hot dogs, but most of the people who call us world-class have probably never been on a subway in their lives. Now, because the TTC is constantly underfunded, the workers lose their composure every few years and threaten to strike. Everybody hates them because they're generally a bunch of mean goons who make more money with no education than the disaffected undergrads and menial service workers who rely on them do. So people tend to focus more on who gets the money instead of the real issue, which is that there just isn't very much of it. But why the constant underfunding? Well, the federal government can't help because the electoral system in Canada is such that supporting Toronto would be political suicide with the rest of the country, because the rest of the country hates us, because they're wankers. The federal government also has major fiscal responsibilities with regards to preserving our national culture. That precludes funding for things like urban mass transit. This cultural funding mostly manifests itself in radio shows about parts of the country that even polar bears refuse to live in, and also dropping off dump trucks full of money in random parts of Quebec. Now, the provincial government of Ontario, the province where Toronto is located, used to subsidize public transit in the city, but all that money went away after we elected a right-wing lunatic to replace a left-wing lunatic from a party called the NDP that everybody in Ontario vowed to never listen to again, including the lunatic. Eventually, tiring of the right-wing lunatic, whose common-sense revolution left barely a cent in any kind of common possession, we pulled the Goldilocks and elected a centrist party in the province who proceeded to do exactly what you might expect something precisely in the centre to do. Absolutely nothing. So now there's no serious federal or provincial funding, so to try and get some public assistance back in, we put the first left-wing guy who promised to never mention the NDP in as mayor. Unfortunately, the feds are still right-wing and the province is still centrist, so they all want the left-wing mayor to screw up. Adding to the mayor's problems, he runs a city council rife with a bloated bureaucracy, councillors who are borderline psychotic, and a bunch of dickheads who live in our suburbs who don't think they should have to pay for all the city services they use when they come commuting in on their gas-guzzling SUVs from the five venue houses that they wanted to buy in the city but could never have afforded. The mayor also let a 12-year-old run the entire commission. So anyways, the transit union gets pissed at management, and they go into a legal strike position. The union also promises to give people 48 hours notice of a strike. Unfortunately, it turns out that promise was contingent on members of the general public showering the workers with love and candy. Jack Layton probably says something, but nobody listens to him because he's in the NDP. Meanwhile, in Alberta, look at that there building. Ain't like she used to be. Nevertheless, the City of Toronto and the Union work out a deal that the Union can recommend to its members, and everyone assumes that things will at least be alright for now. Over at the Union Hall, though, a mechanic and a bus driver are on their 19th collectively bargained coffee break of the day, and the mechanic mentions that the Union boss plans to screw over the mechanics and only take care of the drivers, and asks the driver to stand with him in solidarity forever. The driver's actually been at home on disability for the past three years after a traumatic spitball incident and says lol why not. So the collective agreement is voted down at 11pm and the union boss decides that everyone will go on strike an hour later, stranding thousands of genos in the downtown core. All this even though the drivers could have just finished the shift without telling anyone about the strike and then started striking the morning after, scoring points with the public and still getting to walk out. But the head of the union doesn't do this because he must have lost his goddamn mind. The mayor says something, but nobody listens to him and he has to go to the provincial centrist for help, because he's in the NDP. The centrist reconvene parliament on a Sunday, immediately legislate the TTC back to work, and Howard Hampton probably says something, but nobody listens to him because he's in the NDP. The federal government really has no comment because they're too busy paying off the French to even pay attention, not to mention plotting to drop off bird flu in Vancouver's downtown east side before the 2010 Olympic Games. Somewhere, Olivia Chow is riding a bike. So, in the end, the centrist party that never really does anything comes out looking like the big winner, which is sort of fitting because this is Canada, where we sort of prefer that nothing happens, and this is also Toronto, where even though we're constantly getting bigger and richer, everything we want just seems to slip further and further away. Still, things could be worse for the country as a whole. We could be the backbone of a war so pointless that even the United States of America considers it mostly a waste of time. 